favorite friends, it's Miss Berger and Mr. Lamb, and we're here today to talk to you about quadrilaterals. It's so exciting. Quad meaning four. And lateral meaning lines. Lines, basically four line shapes, right? So we're going to talk about shapes that have four lines. All right, so our learning target, I can identify the properties of quadrilaterals. And I think we already gave this away. What's a quadrilateral? It is a shape that has four lines. Four lines or four sides, right? There so if you get more specific, it is a four-sided sided shape, right? And I guess there are six of there them. There are six of them that we have to know kind of all the properties Ooh. of them. Do you think we could come up with them out of our own without a list? Or we could just flip to the next page. Or we could page. just flip to the next line and we don't have to do it. And so here are the six shapes that we need, six quadrilaterals specifically that we need to know. So a square, a rectangle, a parallelogram, a kite, a rhombus, and a trapezoid. Those are the six that you need to know. And yes. they all have different properties. That's why we're going to talk about it. And if you watch the next video, I'll walk you through the quadrilateral family tree that shows all of this, like the, the group like, that... These are these, but not these. And yeah. you really need to watch it because it's kind of yeah. like enlightening. Yeah, and we group them by their similar features, yes. right? Just like families have similar features. So Should let's talk about. Never mind, I won't give a hint. I don't even know what the hint would be. Well, I was gonna say like parallelograms, like, oh. like never mind. I'll let you do it. Okay, it's fine. Two, more to come. More but to we come. will on this video talk about all the different properties of quadrilaterals. So as you've learned kind of throughout this unit, right, we can use little tick marks or these kind of angle measurement marks or angle arcs, these are the 90 degree ones, to show the properties of quadrilaterals, right? Like for a square. A square has four congruent sides, right? Each of the lines have a tick mark. We know that about a square, it has four congruent sides. It also is made up of four right angles, right? Opposite sides are parallel, opposite sides are congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. Those are all things that are oh true about goodness. a square. A lot, and a lot of those are true of rectangles, but not all of them. Not all of them. Yeah, because again, we have four 90 degree angles, just right. like a square. So opposite right? sides are We have are opposite, opposite angles. sides are parallel. Opposite, opposite sides are parallel. And opposite sides are congruent. Right, because it says one tick, so this one is congruent to this one. But this has two ticks, so this one is congruent to this yeah. one. So what they're going to do is they're going to ask you about this opposite side thing a lot. Yeah. And so you got to be able opposite. to understand what opposites mean. Across. Like across from each other. Okay? So, and what else did we say? Okay, so this one has two sets of congruent sides. Yes. Okay, so we said 90 degree angles, two sets of congruent sides, opposite angles are congruent. Right. All that stuff. Yeah, so all those good things. All right, well, let's talk about a rhombus and a parallelogram. Now right? things get a little bit weirder. Things are a little weirder, right? But I can still use what I know to figure it out, right? So here, oh, we didn't show them the, the marks that mean parallel. So, well, first of all, we didn't define the word parallel. Do you think they know? Well, we talked about parallel lines before, so I hope they know. I don't think we really have. When you did angle relationships, we talked about parallel. Oh, lines. just very briefly, though. Okay, well, go ahead. Okay, so parallel lines mean that they, you would have two lines, that's what they say, that would continue like on forever, but never intersect, right? So parallel would be like two lines that are across from each other forever, in perpetuity, how do you, how right? How you show those on the... Right, and then like perpendicular would be like they're like this. Yeah, that's they the opposite. A, they form a 90 degree angle. So I can show that lines are parallel and that they never will kind of intersect by doing these lovely little like, these little like half arrows. Like double tick marks. Yeah, double tick marks, right? So this means that this line, AC, is parallel to BD. So in a rhombus, opposite sides are parallel. So this one, these ones have two of the little arrows. This one has one. So this line is parallel to this line. And this one is parallel to this one. Right, and in a rhombus, all sides are congruent, right? One tick mark, one tick mark, one tick mark, one tick mark. A rhombus is kind of like if you took a square and you just kind of like pushed it over a little <laughs> yeah. bit. It's a lazy square. It's a lazy square, right? And that diagonals are congruent. Or no, diagonals form a 90 degree angle. Diagonals are perpendicular. Yes. <laughs> form a 90 degree angle. I think she just looked at that thing and went, what am I going to say about Wait, that? I know, now, right? what about angles inside of a rhombus? Oh, with angles.
angles, opposite angles are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle. And one set of them is? Obtuse. And the other set? It's cute. A cute little angle. Yep, now you try yours. Okay, now my <laughs> parallelogram. So parallelograms and rhomb, it's kind of like a parallelogram is to a rectangle what a rhombus is to a square. Yeah. Right? So here we have, kind of. Kind of, well it is, it's yeah, just, yeah, right. we took a rectangle and we kind of like, push, oh, yeah. we just like boop, kind of push it pushed over it over on the side. Okay, so what are the, what are the things what are the that make a parallelogram a parallelogram? Okay, opposite sides are congruent. So it has, yep, two sets of congruent sides. Just like a rectangle does. Right? It has two sets of parallel lines because there's a single parallel Opposite line. Opposite sides are parallel. And there's the double and they're parallel. Okay, again, it has opposite angles are congruent. congruent. So this one matches this one and this one matches this one. Okay, so, and is there anything else that you have to say about a parallelogram? I don't think so. No. Now, what you're gonna find when she does her family tree, uh -huh. like, Parallelograms, like some things, you know, parallelograms is kind of like where you start everything from. They're like from. the ring of parents. Yeah, they're like where you start everything from and then things branch off in there. Because we just said this is like a rectangle pushed over. Yeah. So really a rectangle is a, is a parallelogram because it meets all of those requirements. And it has special things that are unique to just it. Just like a parent is like similar to the grandparent, yep. it has different qualities also. Yes. That make it special. So the four that we just went over, the square, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the parallelogram are all in the parallelogram family. family. Separate, still related, because they have four sides, but kind of like the crazy aunts and uncles of the family, <laughs> are the kites. These are the ones you don't invite to Thanksgiving. Right, the kite and the trapezoid, right? So special about a kite is that adjacent sides, right? Adjacent, they share the vertex. Right? Adjacent sides are congruent. So the top, this one, oh, I don't have a little pen thingy. So this one is congruent to this one. And then these two long ones down here are congruent to those two long ones down there. Oh, and then these ones, aren't these ones congruent? Yes. yes. So this one is congruent to this one. Yeah. And this one is congruent to that. Is it? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Is that true? No. Oh, That's I guess I, I lied. That's not true. If that was true, it would be a rhombus. True. Or at least a parallelogram. <laughs> we, we love, we love these. We just jumped right over the cliff and it was my fault. Yeah. It's no, okay. We'll, we'll recover. No. See, a kite is special because it has one pair of congruent angles. Very good. See, that's a nice, see, I, I set that all up just no. so that you would know no, that there's only one These ones one are congruent, set. but not these ones. That's right. So one set, not two. Now, if I hadn't pointed that out, you would never have known that. That's true. So now, let's talk about the other crazy uncle that would probably be considered me. That would be yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about trapezoids. Now, if you look at the trapezoids, the special thing about a trapezoid, only one set of parallel lines. Yeah. Okay? Oh, I should mention that a kite has no sets of parallel lines. True. So I should mention that. And you can see that in any of these that you look at, that you have one set everywhere that's parallel to each other. So like, what No matter the, how we draw them, but the, the other ones. The bases are parallel. So this one is parallel to this one, that one is parallel to that one, that one is parallel to that one. The bases are parallel, the legs, yep. where the things kind of connecting, the bases are not parallel. Because if I continue this line, Eventually, it would run and into each other. If I continue this line, boop, they intersect. Not yeah, right. even even this one that has a straight line here is eventually going to run into that one. Yep, that one. That's true. Okay, so they're not parallel to each other. So no sets of parallel lines, one set of parallel lines, and then the parallelogram family, two sets of parallel lines. Anything else special about a trapezoid? One set no. of parallel lines. Nothing else is is is. is I just got it from the boss. There is nope. nothing else about this that makes it true. Nada. The geometry expert. They're sitting there going, don't tell them they're anything else. Don't tell them anything else. We should have made her be in this video. My mom was really good at um, measurement and geometry, and it's a little <laughs> yeah, bit of our weak spot, Oh yeah. It, if you haven't noticed, right? Yeah. If my okay. geometry teacher from high school knew that I was even up here, 
She would not she would have roll it over, right? All right, so let's talk about something that we're both really good at, is that finding a missing yes. angle from a quadrilateral, right? So we have to know, we have to know that all four angles of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees, right? So if I have this trapezoid, if I have this trapezoid and I'm, is it? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, sorry, just making sure. All right, so if I have this trapezoid, this quadrilateral, then I can take the angles that I know, right? So I know I have 105, I know I have 80, I know I have 75. So I'm gonna add up, <laughs> bombing. Um, I'm gonna add up these three angle measurements. Which I would right? do for you, but I didn't With the handy dandy calculator. That's okay, I'll do this part and then you can do the second part. Plus 80, plus 75. So I get that those three measurements are 260 degrees. So I take what all four have to be minus what I know, and we can do that one super simple. <laughs> that one, this one I can handle without the calculator. X is 100 degrees. So you can find the missing angle by using what you know. And, and that's true of every quadrilateral. All quadrilaterals, the four angles add up to 160, uh, 360 degrees. So think about it, right? 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, like a rectangle or a square, 360 degrees. And, and remember, when you start talking about some of the other quadrilaterals, they have congruent angles. So they might not give you all three, because right. they might make you have to figure out, hey, those are congruent, so I don't need to actually write it down for you. Right. But in this one, notice, one thing about a trapezoid, they don't have right. any angles. And I'll, I'll show one of the parallelogram ones in the video, because sometimes they'll just give you one angle. So this is one of the times they know. really should watch the second video. You probably really should watch yeah. the second video. And although we're going to say, like, if you're not confused, go ahead, watch the second video. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, just for giggles. Right, so watch the second video, and then let's start that practice. Matter of fact, for Lo the second video, since she's doing it and it's this, I'm sure there's some comic value to it. There's probably, it's probably funny. All right, love you. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.